Um, I'd like to start with you, Jamie, for you to give a presentation. You're one of the young leading American voices on the climate crisis. Um, we'd love to hear your story. The floor is yours. Yes. Um, hold up. Let me pull up my presentation. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my name is Jamie Margolin. I am 16 years old. I live in Seattle, Washington in the United States and I am the founder and executive director of a youth climate action organization called Zero Hour. And I founded this organization back in the summer of 2017 after um, the lack of proper response to Hurricane Maria and all of the other climate disasters that were happening here in Seattle. There was immense wildfires, um, not in Seattle, but the wildfires in Canada were blowing over and the entire city was coated in smoke. And it was the first time I had experienced smog because Seattle is known for having very clean weather, um, and very fresh, the Pacific Northwest. And then suddenly there were air quality warnings that it was worse in Beijing, um, China. So this really led me to start an international youth climate movement that is now known as Zero Hour because this is Zero Hour to act on climate change. And we organized the very first um, youth, <gasps> hold on. We organized the very first youth climate march um, in the United States, uh, in Washington, DC, and in 25 other cities around the world. So it was a big deal and it was very exciting. Um, these are some pictures from the march. It was, we're all high schools, high school students, um, and we self-organize, none of us are hired. So we all work outside of school full-time, organizing, getting on calls. I cannot describe the hours and hours that we spent just working towards this because the United States government needed to hear from its youth that enough is enough and that we the youth deserve a better future. And so we lobbied, we marched, we made a lot of noise this summer, but it was not just noise. The youth, um, the youth presented a platform of what exactly we the young people need in order to have a livable future to the federal government in the United States. And that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is really what Zero Hour stands for and talking about the intersectionality of the climate crisis and um, the, the other aspects of it that, that people often ignore, which is what Zero Hour focuses on. We're very much a social justice organization and we don't just think about, oh, there's carbon in the air and we need to lower it. We think of how did the carbon get there? Um, like, how did we allow a system that could lead us to such destruction? So we talk about really the root of the climate crisis, um, and we talk about the personal effects versus just the scientific. Uh, so these are Zero Hours guiding principles that the youth came up with after interviewing young people on the front lines of the climate crisis from Standing Rock, people dealing with fossil fuel extraction, et cetera. So as a movement, we believe that those who are on the front lines of the movement should lead the movement, meaning that those who are impacted the worst by climate change should be leading it, and that youth leadership is transformational and visionary, and youth must always lead because they've always shifted the culture towards progress and collective liberation. We also have the moral high ground on this issue because um, we didn't create the systems of oppression that caused this crisis, but we're inheriting the worst of it. Um, and in this movement, these are our guiding principles, we'll be peaceful and nonviolent, we'll extend the hand of friendship, and we'll demand that our allies take, act, take action in solidarity with us. And these are just some pictures of we went into frontline communities and did a bunch of workshops with youth educating about the climate crisis um, from a social justice perspective. Um, and you can read the rest of our guiding principles that this is zerohour.org. Um, so what I'm gonna to talk to you guys about now is really what Zero Hour focuses on, which is dismantling systems of oppression and what caused climate change um, are the systems of oppression that let us get to a point where it was so, where, where we extracted and extracted and polluted the world. So um, the systems of oppression relating to climate change include colonialism and empire, because it was when, um, the European forces started colonizing and stripping away indigenous culture, which people live very much in balance with the land and, and it was more about extraction and taking and taking. That's really when 
we started moving towards this crisis. It's not necessarily just, it didn't just start in the industrial revolution. We started moving into a mindset that everything is for sale and that we can extract everything with colonialism and colonialism tried and unfortunately weakened at the influence of indigenous wisdom and culture. Then there's racism. Uh, so it intersects with climate justice because people who are victims of racism are also worse affected by climate change. So what corporations will do is that, um, well, like I said, anyone who's a victim of system of oppression is automatically weaker to the effects of the climate crisis. So there's a reason that the Dakota Access Pipeline was built on indigenous land. It's because um, the government and the companies knew that they could take advantage of those communities because they were already oppressed and marginalized. There's 69% of coal plants are built in majority black communities. That's not a coincidence. Um, when people are poor or uh, disabled or people of color or immigrants, um, the, the corporations can better take advantage of them and they're much more susceptible to the destruction of the climate crisis. And then there's capitalism, which whenever I say that people immediately flinch, uh, especially in the United States, there's a very big, where I live, the culture is, you can't touch that word. It's very taboo to even criticize capitalism or um, challenge it at all. And when I say capitalism, when zero hour we talk about capitalism, we're not out here trying to start the communist revolution or like do anything crazy. What we mean is that capitalism caused the climate crisis because, um, and let me go to the next slide. Come on, computer. Oh. Uh, capitalism, hold on, caused the climate crisis because it's a system of just taking and taking and taking, and it relies on um, just the constant growth of the GDP 24 seven, all the time, growth and extraction. And it's like, we're just cashing out um, the earth, but with no spending limit. And so when I talk about the how capitalism is a system of oppression, I don't mean that business is bad or that commerce is bad or that trade is bad or that we need to start some some crazy new society what i'm saying is that the fundamental principle especially in the united states is that everything is for sale everything is a commodity money is the most important thing um profits is where it's at it doesn't matter if you pollute it doesn't matter if you um cut down the forest as long as you get money 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 that's what matters and we just need to constantly have the number going up and up and up and um i know it's it's on different levels in different parts of the world, but where I live in the United States, it's there's an insane focus on just more and more and more, and that is killing us. Um, one of the that has caused the climate crisis and that zero hour is actively fighting against. And then uh, Black Friday, uh, I don't know how big of a deal it is around the world, but it's a really big deal in the United States. And yesterday I was walking around the mall and it was insane, just the amount of things that people were buying simply because they were on sale, not because they needed them. There's just this obsession. Um, and that's where consumerism comes in. It's slightly different than capitalism. Consumerism and materialism is when people get distracted from the reality of capitalism by buying stuff that they do not need. And this is a huge cause of the climate crisis. Um, and so now I talked about the systems of oppression and what's bad and what we need to stop, but this is these are the solutions and these that Zero Hour is advocating for. So um, we need, there's a need for local schools to implement climate justice education. Um, here in the United States, it varies a lot. Most of the time, just the basic science is covered, but there's no actual justice conversation or a talk about how dire the situation is. Um, there's definitely also a need for local and community farming because people often talk about the fossil fuel industry as being a major cause of the climate crisis, and it is, but at zero hour, uh, the youth recognize that the animal agriculture industry is also a major cause of the climate crisis and um, a huge, reason why all our forests are getting depleted. And so if food is more centralized and localized um, in the community, then that's a lot better for the environment. Um, and so, yeah, this is just a bullet point of different things that we need. But bottom line is that we need a just transition and that's 
where it comes to, um, because it's one thing to simply say that we can slap a solar panel on this issue and it'll go away, but we have to do a lot more work than that. It's a lot deeper. Um, we have to dismantle these systems of oppression. We have to um, put the communities who have been impacted by the climate crisis the most first uh, in the making of these solutions. We can't just simply just say, okay, we're going to switch to renewable energy without um, keeping these communities in mind and making sure that that when we're when we're transitioning to the world that we need to, it needs to be just, it needs to be um, inclusive of indigenous folks, it needs to be putting those communities that have felt the impact of the climate crisis first. Um, so now the final part of my presentation is what can you do? Um, well, one of them is definitely to get involved with Zero Hour. Um, we are a youth organization led by majority young women uh, in the United States and around the world. We have chapters all around the world and we're majority led by um, young women of color and young women from frontline communities. So it's very important to support organizations that are made up of the people who are the worst affected by the climate crisis and the most marginalized. Um, you can go to this is zerohour.org to read more about our platform that was written by youth on the front lines about what we the youth need in order to have a livable future. Another thing is that we, the young people, are um, complete, we're a completely volunteer organization. We are just high schoolers with a passion for, uh, we fully understand that this is zero hour to act on climate change and we have a passion for a better world. So donating to zero hour is definitely something that you can do to help. Um, we are gearing up for our next big actions that'll take place in Miami, Florida, but then also um, we're hoping that there will be sister actions around the world. We have not released that yet though. It will come out in the new year. Um, other things that you can do is divest your money from national banks because those banks are funding the fossil fuel industry, which go into communities like indigenous communities and totally not only pollute the world, but wreck their communities. And you can support elected officials who believe in climate change and climate justice. And that is it for me.